Hello and welcome to my channel or, or welcome back if you've been here before. Uh, my name is Gene Curl and this is another exciting episode of me reading my mission journal that I kept while I was a missionary for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And with that said, I'm just going to start off where I left off on my last episode. Friday the 17th of September, 2004. Clear hot light wind. We got blasted early. Uh, we got up blasted early, loaded our stuff in the truck, and headed for the airport. In the parking garage at the airport, I almost got into a wreck because as I was turning into a parking stall, an uh, impatient driver sped in between me and the stall, causing me to slam on the brakes. I flew to the Big Island, Hawaii, with three elders and one sister. When I got to the Big Island, I had to drive Elder Peeve's car because his license were stolen and his companion can't drive. I drove Elder P to the zone leader's pad and then to his pad. After that, I rode with the zone leader, Elder S, to my pad to wait for the other zone leaders and my companion. The pad is a little apartment built onto the church building. The church is kind of out in the country. Then again, the whole area is. Elder O, the new zone leader, and Elder S's companion, and Elder D, my companion, showed up about two hours later. Then they said they would, they would, then they said they would, and worried Elder S half to death. While I waited for them, I unpacked and cleaned a little. Elder D and I went to meet most of the investigators and a few of the members. We read the Book of Mormon with our committed investigator. I really don't remember anyone's names yet. We met a lot of really cool people today. A Tongan family gave us money for dinner, so we ate at Subway. We visited the bishop for a short time. The bishop served his mission in Hawaii ten years ago. When I introduced myself, where I am from, etc., and told the bishop that the president said that, that I would stay here the rest of my mission, he said, you have two transfers left. I was surprised and asked how he knew, so he told me that Elder H. told him about me and that I came out with him. Elder D. acts a little trunky, but not bad. So far, things are going pretty good, and he did not act overly trunky the first day, and it seems to me that he wants to work hard. I have been on my mission for a long time, and I don't think that I have ever known a missionary to spend more time in the restroom than Elder D. Every time he goes in there, he takes at least 30 minutes. Saturday, the 18th of September, 2004. It rained hard almost all day, and it was pretty cool, low 70s. This morning, after devotional, we went to see Carlton, our committed investigator, and read the Book of Mormon with him. We ate lunch at McDonald's, and I had a hard time staying awake today because I have not had very much sleep this week. We tried to see lots of people and caught a few people, but taught none. We got a media referral for a lady and we were pretty excited, but when we got there, we found out that it was a crazy lady who has a restraining order against one of the members of the ward. I'm not sure what to think about being Elder D's companion yet. Most of the time, he acts like he wants to work hard and, and be obedient and has not given me any real reason to think otherwise, but it seems as if he looks for any reason to not go out without being obedient, like it's raining too hard, etc. Or perhaps I am just too driven to make every minute count and want to bring him with me. I really do want to help Elder D have a great last transfer, and I want these last two transfers of mine to be the best of two of my mission. Tonight we came home one hour early because of language study for Elder D and because there is no one to see this time of night. I want to take everything that he says for face value unless it, is, unless it proves otherwise. I hope and pray that it will be that I'll be able to do whatever President Hawkins and the Lord expects of me. I am supposed to keep Elder D from getting trunky, but in the process, I'm keeping myself from getting trunky. It gets blasted cold here in Hawaii, the Big Island, every night, 60 degrees, and I have to use a blanket. This is the first area of my mission that I've had to use a blanket. Sunday, the 19th of September, 2004. Rain almost all day long, a light wind, cool. Well, this ward meets the same time as my last ward, as does the PEC. We sat in the very back during a second meeting, and I could not pay attention to the speaker because 
Someone's little kids kept distracting me by running all over the place. Elder D taught elders quorum, and during the lesson, he called on me to tell my conversion story. After lunch, we hung around for an hour, talking to members. I was really surprised that almost everyone knew that I go home in December and knew my name. Later, Elder D talk, uh, told me that Elder H really talked me up and all the members and told them that I am a good, hard-working missionary. He also told them that I came out with him. I ate lunch at the pad and then went visiting people. After a couple of hours, Elder D said, I am almost tempted to go home because it is raining so hard and everyone is asleep. What he had said was pretty much that the way it was, but I suggested that we try a few more people, and we stayed busy until dinner. We had dinner with the ass family. After dinner, we went to church to watch a video with the Carlton, but he never showed up, so we just watched the video without him, then came home to plan. Earlier today, while Elder D was backing up, I motioned for him to stop, but he did not stop in time and hit a wimpy little tree and put a small dent in the left rear fender of the truck. He was upset and worried that he would get black dotted. We really need to tell the office, and I hope that he calls without any pressure from me. In a way, I kind of hope that Elder D does get black dotted just because he is so arrogant and cocky about his driving and claims to be the best driver out there. But I will help however I can to help him to not get black dotted. But I will not lie, and I will not let him slide it and not tell the office. To be black dotted is when something happens and they make it so you can't drive anymore, and they take your, they put a black dot on your record, and that means you can't, can't drive any mission cars. Monday, the twentieth of September, two thousand four. It was clear until about noon, and then it rained for the rest of the day. Hot, early, cool, late, light wind. I got up at 5.45, like I always do, and did my laundry and wrote letters to my mom, to Joan, to aunt and uncle, uh, to my aunt and uncle Roland, to the B family, and to Aaron. We played volleyball with elders P, elder, and, and the Simone elder, I can't remember his name, elder A, elder S. First we played at the sand pit in the park, but a few elders complained about it being too hot, so we went to the stake center. Elder A actually kicked accident Elder A sorry, Elder O accidentally kicked Elder D in the leg and bruised it. My team won half the game. We just cruised our pad most of the day and I did a little cleaning. We went to the library so that Elder D could email. He had a note from his girlfriend that his brother forwarded to him and it made him super trunky. Elder D called to ask what to do about his leg, and while he was on the phone with the office, I tried to get him to tell them about the dent in the truck, but he said he would tell the APs at his own conference. I did not want to start anything, so I let it drop for now. I know that I was put with him to help him keep him going strong and do whatever is right, but I am not exactly sure how to go about it. I think that I should try to be his friend and a good example. We ate dinner and had a family home evening with the you family. During dinner, I asked for a refill on my drink, and Brother Yu took my glass and handed it to his wife. She thought it was his and took a drink out of it before handing it back. Everyone was looking at her, so she asked what she did. Her husband told her, and when she he did, everyone laughed, including her. We came home after dinner. Clear for the rest... Clear for the first few hours, then overcast and rain in the evening, hot light wind. I really don't know what to do to help Elder D. He does not study his scriptures. He sometimes goes back to bed during companionship study. He does not know, he does not kneel to pray and even uh, wait to get out of his wife's until the close. And he always wants to come home early for language study, but then does not study language. Now that he hurt his leg, it will give him an excuse to study at the pad a lot, to stay at the pad a lot. But as of yet, he has not even suggested staying home because of it, much less attempted, but has worked even though he is constantly complaining about the pain. I think that he really does want to work and have hard and finish his mission strong. We did service at all morning for Brother K. What we, what we spent most of the time doing is gathering all of the tea plants for Lao Lao, where he is going to clean the ground with his tractor. He fed us a small kind lunch after we went to the pad to clean up and get ready to visit people. 
we checked the mail. Elder Elder D had his trunky papers from the office, and that made him severely trunky for a little while. We had an appointment, but they canceled. So we spent most of the time trying to catch our investigators. <clears throat> we taught Jose the last discussion, even though he had it on a few months ago. I'm glad we taught today. I would hate to report zero on my first week here. I also don't want to have a zero on my last week or my any other week here. After we tried to visit every, everyone, we ate dinner at the pad. Wednesday, the 22nd of September, 2004. Clear, hot, light wind. Wow, no rain. <clears throat> we had to give a blessing at the hospital this morning. I anointed an LDD blessed. On the way back to the pad, we had breakfast at McDonald's. After breakfast, we read the Book of Mormon with Carlton for a while and then talked to the bishop. At church, Elder D was talking about how he will not get married so that he won't have to be the bishop of a ward. So Bishop A said, do you have any idea how wrong that is? You are on the wrong path. After a few minutes of listening to Elder D talk about going home, Bishop said, Elder, do me a favor. Keep your head in the ward for at least another month. Uh, by head, I mean your thoughts and all of your you, all of your might, mind, and strength, and heart. And a little later, he told Elder D that he is too trunky. When we checked the mail, I was excited to see the envelope for me, but when I opened it, I found out that they were only campaign, campaign ads. One envelope was a Democrat and one was a Republican. <clears throat> we had a week plan during our week. Sister, uh, During our week plan, Sister K came and asked if we could helped the Cub Scouts learn to tie a tie, so we went to the church with some junk ties and showed them how. After we finished our week plan, we picked up our dinner money for tomorrow, then picked up Brother H at his house and met Brother Ian at the church. We went with Brother Ian and visited less active and part member families from 1600 to 1930, and then we went to Brother Ian's house for dinner. Every house that we visited, Brother Ian gave them bread. Brother Ian pretty much runs the ward. His wife is the Religious Society, and his son is in law is the bishop, and they all live in his house. After dinner, we dropped off <clears throat> Brother H and came home. Tonight, Elder D told me that when transfer calls came, the zone leaders did not want to tell him that I was to be his companion because they thought that he would be upset. When he found out, he said, Why would I be upset? Elder Curl is cool. He told me that I have changed so much from the MTC that I almost am not the same person. We did not exactly see eye to eye at the MTC because I liked rules and he did not. I tried to force people to obey and now I just be as obedient as I can and hope that everyone will follow my example. Elder D has changed a lot too. He went from very disobedient and wanting to be a, to wanting to be obedient. Since I have been with him, he has not he has been obedient in the most part and wants to work. Thursday, the 23rd of September, 2004. Clear up until, uh, clear up until about 14.30, then heavy rain, light wind, hot. This morning around 9, President Hawkins called to talk to me. He asked me how the area is going and if I was working Elder D hard. He also asked if Elder D was trunky. I could not say too much because Elder D could hear everything that I said. I told him that Elder D is a little trunky, but in the most part, working hard. I told him how the area is going, etc. President asked me if I would make it a matter of prayer and work really hard to get a, about really eight really solid people to work with by the end of the transfer, because he would really like me to train the next transfer. But there needs to be stuff for the new missionary to do so that he can be trained right. <clears throat> he encouraged me to keep working hard and said that he knows that I can do it. Well, it really sounds like President will have me train next transfer. <clears throat> District meeting was a lot of fun today, despite Elder P and Elder D getting trunky and talking about going home. After a district meeting, we all ate lunch at Wendy's. I drove today and really like the four-wheel drive Chevy S10 that we have in this area. A lot better than the piece of junk Dodge that I drove in Wyoming. We visited John M. and taught him the second discussion. He was interested in what we taught, but he is not sure that he wants to be baptized. When I told him about the Stop Smoking program, he was really interested, so I told him that we would try to teach him it on Saturday. 
We visited a guy named Adam and taught him about God, prayer, etc. And did not have a lot of he did not have a lot of religion growing up, so a lot of the things that we taught are new to him. He said that he would try to come to church on Sunday. We visited a lot of other people, but there was nothing that happened that is worth mentioning. We were at the pad for about an hour because Elder G said that he felt sick. We came back to the pad about 19.30 for dinner. When we were at the pad for, for Elder D being sick, I made phone calls to members and old investigators. Then we visited people for a little while and then I came home for dinner. I started trying to learn to play my ukulele today in hopes that I will know a song before I go home. Friday the 24th of September 2004. Clear, half the day, hard rain, midday, warm, light wind. In the most part, Elder Douglas is not bad of a driver except that he always, almost always exceeds the posted speed limit and sometimes goes way over the safe speed limit for the conditions. He is so cocky and thinks that he is the best driver around, so I almost hope that he does something to get black dotted. I don't want him to damage anything because it wouldn't cost the church money. <clears throat> this morning we went out, of, out to Mililii, which is the last fishing village in Hawaii, and tried to see some investigators, but they were not home. Mililii is a nice, quaint little fishing village where fishing is their livelihood, and half the people does not have electricity and no one has running water. We ate lunch at the pad. I had a letter from my mother in which she said that Joan, my younger sister, called her wedding, uh, changed her wedding day from March the 28th to, from March to the 28th of December. We did not teach anyone today. Most of the people that we visited today were too busy to talk to us. We had dinner with the W family tonight. Saturday the 25th of September 2004. Clear until about 1500 and then heavy rain for an hour. Light wind. We visited a few people before lunch and then had lunch at the pad. After lunch we tracked it for a little while and did not teach anyone. I really wanted to tract a lot more because I want to meet and teach some new people but I don't think that Elder D is that motivated to tract and I don't want to push it just yet. We visited Carlton with the bishop and read out of the Book of Mormon for a while. We had a walk, to walk home in the rain and then we helped the Relief Society sisters get their cars from the chapel without getting wet. The morning from the morning, oh, the M family dropped off dinner to us at the pad. After dinner, we visited the, the C family for a little bit. Sunday the 26th of September 2004, clear most of the day. In PEC, I mentioned the six-step program and no one was even the least bit interested. Later in the day, after church, Bishop A. told us that getting people to volunteer for things in this ward is almost impossible and that the key to success in this ward is not tracting, it is teaching the members because the gospel is not being taught in the homes. He wants us to teach all members, not just less active members. Active members will stay active and help with the work and we can bring back the less active members and baptize the non-member families and the part member families. In sacrament meeting, Brother K got up for 20 minutes, or at least it felt like it, and he talked about birthing pigs and how he had to help a, a pig give birth. I bore my testimony and told everyone that I'm glad to be in the K ward, but because I pronounced it wrong, everyone kind of made fun of me. I don't think that I'll ever live it down saying the name wrong. <clears throat> we rode with the K family and had dinner at the C family's house. With the way things are going in this area and with the lack of word support, I am afraid that our teaching numbers will stay low and President will think that I failed at the assignment that he gave me, which is to keep Elder D working hard and to have at least eight solid investigators by the end of the transfer. We talked to the bishop later in the day at his house and he told me that what I do for the next three months will mostly be the seeds and that we will not be any immediate results from it. He also told us that there has not been an adult baptism in the ward for about two years. The bishop really wants us to work with the members. I am, I am a fine line here between keeping president and the bishop happy. 
the bishop does not really want us to track and that much, but does not care if we do track a little in the area where the other churches does not go all the time. President wants us to track and find a lot of soul investigators. President probably expected me to turn this area around from where it is at, but it is not going to happen in three months, and I will likely not be the result. And it will, and I will not not likely see the results of my labor. I am really afraid that President will not uh, look at my labor, but the visible results, and think that I have failed. If my mission president thinks that I have failed, then my home state president and bishop will think that I failed. The Lord knows that my whole mission, I have always tried to do all that was expected of me, and if possible, a little more. I only hope that when all is said and done, that the Lord will be pleased with what I have done here in Hawaii, and that I will be able to look back with no regrets. We visited Brian, a less active divorced member, and his neighbor, who is also a divorced member. Brian has two little kids, and does as does she. She is also not active. I helped one of her kids with her school project, which in my opinion is a, difficult for a second grader. I really enjoy helping kids, but I don't think that I am ready for my own yet. I also played catch with the boy while talking to Brian. <clears throat> Monday, the 27th of September, 2004. Clear, hot, light wind. Elder D and I are supposed to unlock the seminary room, but we had not been doing it, and the seminary teacher scolded us for it. This morning I felt sick, but decided that I should unlock the door since it is expected of us. But as soon as I got back inside the pad, I threw up in the toilet. I felt pretty sick, so I laid back down after I showered until the other elders showed up. Elder S, Elder E... Oh, Elder P, Elder M went with Elder D and I to the Hawaiian place of refuge, and we all took lots of pictures. All the elders except for Elder P and myself wanted to play basketball, so Elder P and I went to have the brakes fixed on his car. A member was going to fix them for us. While the member took the rotors off so that he could have them turned, I helped another member to clean up the yard. While well, we all waited for the auto store to turn the rotors, the member whom I'll call Brother D, well, the member who I'll call Brother DeKine, brought us, brought us back to this house for the lunch. <clears throat> One of his sons was acting like his brain is, is fried, so Brother DeKine said, the boy ain't right, which is exactly what I thought. That wasn't his name, by the way. I just, I didn't remember his name. When the rotors were finished, I put the brakes. Finished. I put the brakes, etc., on one side of the car while Brother DeKine did the other. When he finished, he had the extra part that I had to show him where it went. Elder P and I met Elder D and Elder M on my pad, and we started our team up. Elder D went with Elder P into his area. Elder M and I went to see the uh, the A family and had dinner and family home meeting with him. Sister A gave me a hard time for pronouncing the name of the word wrong on Sunday. Yep, I probably won't be able to live that one down. Oh well, they can only give me a hard time about it for two months. Tuesday the 28th of September 2004. Partly cloudy, hot, light wind. Sister M and I went to see Carlton and taught him uh, partly cloudy and a light wind. Elder E.M. and I went to see Carlton and taught him about the priesthood and a lot of other things. He told us that he is not ready to get baptized because he is not ready for that kind of commitment. Yet I told him that I love him and want him to be baptized, but I don't want him to do it until he feels right about it. I also told him that he is a lot closer than he thinks. He is, he is to being ready because he said he does not feel worthy. We also read the Book of Mormon with him. We ate lunch at the pad. Elder M. cooked breakfast this morning, and at lunch time he made lunch. I received my absentee ballot, and after filling it out, I mailed it. I voted Republican, not because that is the only way I'll vote, but because the people running on a Republican ticket this time supports what I believe in. I gladly voted for President Bush again. We tracked it a little today, about an hour. 
but I was unable to teach anyone. I visited most of our investigators, but most of them were busy. We had dinner with the P family, and I shared the dinner message about the farmer teaching his son how to plow. We visited some old media referrals. We met Elder P and Elder D and Elder Donalds and followed them to Elder P's pad to spend the night so that we could help with service tomorrow. Wednesday the 29th of September 2004. Clear, hot, mostly calm. All of us had a devotional tonight before we left. I did not have breakfast because there was nothing to eat. From about 10 until about 1500, the four of us helped move some people. It is kind of weird because a man and woman who had been separated for a long time decided to switch houses when the divorce went through. It would have worked a lot faster switching houses, but the new wife made it difficult for everyone. She was really bossy and took no thought of what her unreasonable demands would cost in time. I told her that we only have about an hour to finish unloading and loading the truck, and she said, well, if it can't be done where it's easy for me, then I have been screwed getting it done today. I told her that if that's the way she feels about it, then we might as well leave now. I think that she was rather ungrateful for all of the free help. Her husband really appreciated us because without us, he would have to do all of it by himself. When we were finished helping move, Elder D and I came back to our pad and cleaned up for a team up. We went with Brother Ian and Elder... I went with Brother Ian and Elder D went with Brother H. After we visited all the less active people, we planned to. We all had dinner at the Ian family's home. Then we took Brother H home. Thursday the 30th of September 2004. Clear most of the day, but there was a little rain about midday on a little after, or a little after. Hot light wind. I think I ate more this morning than I have ever had for breakfast. I ate four eggs and six pieces of toast. At district meeting today, Elder S. and one of the zone leaders announced some new changes in the mission. We're no longer allowed to play board games or card games, and now we have to work out for 30 minutes every day, except for Sunday. One thing that I am really excited for is that we get the new missionary guide. A lot of the stuff happened today after district meeting. We read the Book of Mormon with Carlton, and we ended the day with a family home evening dinner with the Inn family. Before we left for a home, they gave us each an aloha tie. Well, that will be it for this episode. As always, if you have any questions or concerns or comments, feel free to comment down below, and I will get back with you and answer your questions as soon as possible. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying these videos um, and uh, I really appreciate you watching this video and I will catch you in the next video.